I'm proud to say this podcast is sponsored by Discover Delicious, an online shop for the finest in Welsh food, drink and foodie experiences from independent producers around Wales. Discover Delicious is the largest collection of Welsh food and drink online. Go to www.discoverdelicious.wales to see more. Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Clonk podcast. A podcast all about good food, good drink and good company. In each episode we look at a topic in food or drink and in the first episode we looked at coffee. So if you haven't had a chance to watch or listen to that episode, please do so. In this episode, it just feels like natural progression. The topic for this episode is cake. And I'm very happy to be joined by the super talented Gareth Davis. Now, Gareth is a multi-award winning Sugarcraft artist and baker. He can be seen on national TV and radio. He has been a judge, he is a business owner, and a model. Just look at those cheekbones. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think you'd mention that. <laughs> we also have had the pleasure of working together when I used to run the sub clubs. So, Gareth, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely. Well, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. It is. I make it time for tea and cake. Would you like perfect to do the honours, please? Absolutely. It's a perfect time, isn't it? It's a nice chance when I'm doing these podcasts to actually catch up with people I haven't seen for a while. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we haven't seen each other in ages now. No. Nice. And, and tell us, Gareth, we're in here at Let Them See Cake, which is your business. Yes. What is Let Them See Cake? Oh, so Let Them See Cake is a little business here in Victoria Park and we do lots of different things here. So we do events, we do classes um, and we also sell birthday cakes and celebration cakes as well. Um, so we've got always got something going on for the children and adults and we do kind of evening classes and little bits like that. So it's good fun. And yeah. how long have you guys been running now? So it'll be two years now in April. So Fantastic. yeah, so I'm looking forward to the second birthday. Yes. And where can people look for your work? Where they can, where so, can they find, you know, let them see cake all the online? Socials. Yeah, all the socials. Oh, so- Hit them up with yeah. their socials, girl. Yeah. Assassin T. At let them see cake. We're all up there on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and also on our website. So if you fancy coming along for one of the classes, have a little look at our website, letthemseecake.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> yeah. well, um, right, so today's topic is cake. And the yeah. reason I wanted to talk about it is that it's something that I thoroughly enjoy, lots of people do. Yeah. But I just want to look at it a little bit deeper. For example, what do you think it is about cake that people love so much? Well, I absolutely love cake. You yeah, know? absolutely. I can probably tell, um, but I um, I think it's because it's something that kind of brings people together, especially when you're, you know, with the little um, little ones. You want to kind of um, do something together. Yeah. And I think it kind of stems from that, and then also it tastes so good as well. Yeah. So it's like good results. So you make it with the kids, and then obviously you get the good results afterwards because you get to try it all. Um, and I think it's something nice and sociable as well. Yeah, there's a lot to be said um, for that. Absolutely. I, I, I think all those things, especially when you say a social thing, they talked about this in, in the previous one, like when you go for a coffee, it's often with other people as well. Yes. And when you have cake, it's really nice when you're in a social environment where it's either a birthday, it just seems like the center of the occasion, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a sharer, isn't it? Yeah. So everybody kind of gets involved and it's just a lovely thing to, like a centerpiece. Yeah. Um, and everyone gets a slice of it and it's just <laughs> such a nice thing, yeah. I, I think at the, at, the, at the real core of it, it's just, it just brings happiness and joy. Absolutely, it brings happiness to me. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Well, without being just like you know um, uh, the Von Trapp family about this and the Sound of Music, it it, it does something about cake yes. is just so comforting, absolutely, um, and joyous. And when you, you know, is there an argument for even bad cake is good cake or is bad cake just bad cake? Well, I think you know. I think at least you try. It, it, whatever cake you do, and as long as you've put the effort to make it, yeah, I think it's 
it's nice. It's a nice thing, you know. Yeah. If somebody's made the effort to make you a cake, for example, and even if it's not the best, yeah, it's still good cake. It still it tastes good, <laughs> you know. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, my wife, Karis, uh, she once uh, got a cake uh, for my thirtieth. Uh, birthday party uh, a long time ago yeah. uh, I hasten to add <laughs> and uh, and she paid uh, paid someone to make the cake yeah and uh, the cake arrived and it was the driest thing ever oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, so we couldn't we couldn't serve this to anyone yeah. so I, I ended up making something uh, myself for it yes but in that you know it's just having a go. It's not that my cake was particularly better. No, but... I just had a go at doing yeah, it. exactly. And it's just doing that is just makes it all just so much better because you went to the, out to the, uh, and had the effort to do it, you know? Yeah. I think that's really nice. Um, but, yeah, paying for dry cake is never good. No, no. no. So, in that <laughs> respect, are, are we saying... Bad cake is bad cake. So, but that having a go um, in terms of making cakes and, yeah. and baking, do you think shows like, uh, I mean, very obvious question, and I'm, I'm sure people uh, are thinking, well, I know the answer to that, but do you think shows like Bake Off have had a huge impact on baking as a nation? Absolutely, yeah, I think so because it's like bringing people together, yeah, um, and to watch a TV program that people everybody's got like something in common, like they might not even bake, but everyone, can, yeah. most people like cake, so it's watching something that everybody enjoys watching, and I think it does definitely come around then to um, people wanting to learn how to make cakes and stuff like that, and uh, um, that's why we come in handy here because yeah. we have seen the boom. Um, since Bake Off's been on. So do you think there's a direct link between, you know, with Bake Off and, for example, the kind of business you're in? Absolutely, yeah. Well, we're lucky enough, actually, to have people from the Bake Off come here yeah. and demonstrate and different bits like that. And they're so popular. People love coming yeah. to see them. And we just want more from them, you know. And um, people want to learn from, from... I mean, not only is it a great show to watch mm. uh, it, it's the people's stories I think people buy into as well you know you've yeah. got these very skillful people doing amazing baking uh, we know the characters uh, the hosts yeah. that kind of thing um, uh, I do think Bake Off has had a huge impact on, especially on the home Absolutely. baking yeah do you, do you actually here's a question when you're watching Bake Off, do you eat some? Do you eat cake when you watch Bake Off, or do you have like a treat um, when you're watching Bake Off? I know I do. Like we're like, right, yeah. what we're we gonna have when we're watching Bake Off? Yeah, absolutely. I think, oh god, I've got a treat on by me next to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, I can't stop eating nice stuff. But uh, um, oh, yeah. really? Do you ever reach a point where like I just don't want to look at a cake? No, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. So, no. Sometimes, especially my own case, I suppose it's just like because I make them all the time yeah. and every day. It does get a bit, you know. But I like to eat different stuff like I love chocolate and stuff like that yeah um, but not always cake I don't always go for cake how do you how do you think the show's translated when it moved from like BBC mm. to Channel 4 do you think you know it's the same it got better what was the um, losing know. Mary Berry yeah, and the other hosts the same yeah I know but then I don't think it's changed too much to be honest I think it's no. more um, like a little bit more entertaining now as well with different people that they get in and I think for the amount of years they had it on BBC I, I think they needed a little bit of a change up so. I think so yeah it, it's it was not, good to have a change I love Noel and Sandy I know Sandy's leaving now uh, uh, yeah. but I think they're great I, I love the fact that Noel doesn't have a hundred percent of a clue what he's doing but there he's but so he's turned up and he's enthusiastic yeah he's so quirky I love it yeah I absolutely love it but also, it's like, it's fun to see. So if you follow all the Instagrammers as well, the, the bakers the contestants. on Instagram. Yep. And a lot of, it's the same with all the kind of Instagrammers, like I'm on Instagram and stuff like that. And people kind of invest them because cake is like a pretty thing to yeah. look at as well. So it's always nice to see what people are doing and what pretty things they're So you've hit, hit, hit on a topic there of like uh, the look of the cake. Do you mm. think because of shows like that, 
the expectation is so much higher. Not only Bake Off, the other baking shows on different channels and things like that. Yeah. Do you think the expectation is so much higher that this cake needs to look like this? Or I want it to be a drip cake. I want it to be this. I want it to be that. Yeah, I don't think it's so much with the shows so much because they are like Bake Off. They are actually amateur bakers. Yeah, yeah. So it's something that people can achieve at home, even though some of the tasks can be quite hard for them. Yeah. You know? um, but I think Instagram has definitely got a massive um effect on that because you just want to um achieve what people are posting on instagram because they're so beautiful you yeah know, some people make amazing stuff um so you want to achieve that so you know? do you think that's impacted on so people coming to you looking for a bespoke cake are Ooh. they looking for a particular finish for example a particular standard to yeah absolutely you know we get a lot of um, people sending in photos of what they want them to look like yeah um lots from magazines and yeah. stuff that they've seen but not always the cakes that you see in magazines are actual cakes sometimes yeah. you've got polystyrene in the middle <laughs> of them so it is hard Do you have to explain then. that to people like something sometimes. that you might be viewing is perhaps not possible in the real world yeah. this is for um a centerpiece or a That's photo, yeah, not necessarily to, to carve up at your birthday party yeah, or something. Yeah, it's more for inspiration. Yeah. You know? um, so we're di using the different colours, and for example, if it's a wedding cake, it's like using the bride's dress as a piece on the cake or yeah. something like that. And it's more for inspiration than um, kind of what people can make these, you know. Um, but obviously, there are some talented people out there that can make these amazing yeah. cakes, but not everyone can, you know. So, uh, what What's the most outlandish cake you've been asked to make? Um, well, one quite recently. Yeah, yeah, I can, I, yeah, when I asked the question, I'm like, actually, I know the answer to this. Yeah. But go, go, tell people who haven't... Uh, so, um, recently I was uh, privileged to, ask, to be asked to make a 10-tier cake. 10-tier! Yes, for um, St. David's 10-year Big in the game. <laughs> yeah, for the anniversary. So, um, that was brilliant. And... It was so fab to be able to put everything that's been going on in Cardiff and around Cardiff and in St. David's um, shopping centre um, and everything that's been going on onto the cake, which was really cool. It was really fun. Yeah, it was I an incredible, it. incredible cake. And uh, if you look back on Gareth's social media, you'll see it. We'll yeah. also post a, yeah, a photo of it um, on my socials as well. And that was incredible because it was 10 tiers, but each tier was decorated with either a character or an event, whether yeah. it be the rugby or that's whether it be um, uh, another event that's happened in Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of what's happened in the last 10 years. Yeah. And um, so like the, um, the gift appeal that they have for yeah. Christmas and Halloween and lots of different things that they have. How long did that fun. cake take you to make? So we were preparing it and doing it for five weeks just on the sugar <sighs> art. Bits, okay, yeah, yeah. And then it all kind of came um, together then in the last week. So it was very tense. <laughs> you hit on a term there. Sugar craft, sugar art. Yes. Can you just explain to us all what exactly that is, if people are not aware of what it is? Um, so you've got cakes, people yes. like cakes, delicious stuff. Yeah, that's it. What's sugar craft? So sugar craft is like, uh, it's pretty much like an art, okay. really, more than cake. So we've got like, um, there is a sugar craft show that you can okay. go to and have a look at all the different people's kind of artwork and it's amazing you know what people can make out of sugar yeah um so it is a little bit different not necessarily you'd want to eat all of it because yeah. it'll just after you've made the piece of art it might go hard and it's something that you want to keep okay you could eat it if you really want but it wouldn't be very tasty okay. let's put it that way um, and it's kind of the stuff that you put on top of different cakes. So, okay. for example, like toppers and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. So traditionally stuff you might have seen like on the top of a wedding cake, yes. but now becoming more of an art form in its own That's right. That's it, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. you've won some awards in it, right? Yeah, very lucky. So what do you, you have to do at these, uh, these competitions for these sugar craft things? So there's like lots of prep work for it and you'd, I'd work on it for months and months. Okay. So, because um, sugar doesn't go off really. Okay, fine. It's really, it's so you could keep these things afterwards? Yeah, okay, 100%. cool. 100%. So if you come around, have a little look around the shop and you'll see lots of my little um, bits of work. Um, and basically you um, have a brief to work towards. Yep. And then you've got to do it 
to their size and all of that and then you can create whatever you want um, so I did um, quite a few different bits I've done big exhibits and also miniature ones so like people uh, like little yeah, models of people or it. animals or things like that yeah so once I did like a tiny little farmhouse kitchen okay. like that with an old lady um, baking in there yeah and that was really cute and then I also I did like a massive rat which is cool and it was as cute. you do yeah hey Gareth what are you doing I'm making a rat out yeah, of sugar it was a friendly rat but it was very cute yeah very cute you're the llama you did was, yeah. that, was that sugar craft yeah. was that cake so that was cake okay fine yeah. fine so um, that was one of our classes that we hold here so we made a massive llama all out of cake absolutely yeah it's a, it's a big long class to do but it's good fun it's really good so we mentioned about sugar craft mm-hmm. I've got a few other cake sort of terminology yes. that I'd like a bit of like demystifying yes. so can we look at basic stuff like what is buttercream I know yeah. it tastes delicious mm, uh, but what it is it is. So buttercream is literally like what we've got on these cakes here. Um, so it's just sugar and butter, really, but it tastes so good, doesn't it? Oh, the two good things <laughs> in life. And you can mm. add lemon and vanilla and all that. And what is ganache? Ganache. So, yes. Uh, yes, it's the famous What one. is ganache? You hear it <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I know. It's so nice, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's basically just chocolate and cream. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. So hang on. Buttercream. Yeah. Is butter uh, and sugar yeah. amazing? And ganache is chocolate and cream. So you just keep it simple, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> and moving on from the cake thing, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, afternoon tea. I just wanted to pick your brain uh, or thoughts about afternoon tea. I feel in the last few years there's been a real boom in afternoon tea, mm. almost to the point of overexposure, uh, yeah. a little bit. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Because you've worked in a hotel setting before as well, yeah. and other venues that we'll speak about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I worked in Pettigrew Tea Rooms yep. for a, a number of years, uh, which is lovely. You've got to go if you haven't <laughs> been. Um, it's so nice there, and we served afternoon tea, and it's uh, it's just one of these things I think that are so popular now, yeah. and it's just a nice thing to do. Yeah, you know? it's a nice special occasion thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But do do you feel like because it's so popular, sometimes the importance of it has been watered down a little bit? Because in my in my opinion, in yeah. my thoughts, I think it is such a skill to produce these tears to a certain level. I think it's being done so often, and then sometimes. I think it's just attention to detail. So the one at Pescrew Tea Room, which is very, very good, yes. um, is just a lovely, lovely afternoon uh, tea. But some places, what are your thoughts on like mini burgers? I know. Oh, that's, I, yeah, yeah, it's taking it like in a different direction. Yeah, absolutely. So like at the tea rooms, we used to do kind of afternoon teas, but it kind of said what it... Traditional style. Yeah, what it is yeah. on a tin, really. Um, but with some, yeah, you do get all different kinds of things on afternoon tea. And the thing is, sometimes I do think, why not experiment, try and yeah. make things a little bit different. It's like light bites and stuff like that. Um, I would love the the percentage ratio on it to be a little bit more weighted to savoury, though. I feel... <laughs> I feel oh, so after uh, really yeah, see uh, afterwards I'm like I eat the last mouthful and I go uh, <laughs> diabetes I know. you know and I'm done yeah. you know I, I just would love a few more savoury options in there yeah no hundred percent and I think you people are doing just savoury afternoon teas and stuff like that yeah. now which is really nice um, but no I think it's good to keep the cake in there somewhere yeah no hundred you know, percent I think yeah keep it yeah I think perhaps more traditionalist on it yes um but a few more savory options and i think shop around for like the afternoon tea thing see what the the reviews are like and things like that because i think um, people want to try a little bit of everything now you know yeah um so it's really nice to be able to explore and try different things yeah and talking about bringing it back to cake uh the core subject uh, of the pod if people are new to baking or just getting into baking, yeah. are there any uh, basic top tips you can give them to, for starting baking? For example, equipment, things like that. Mm, absolutely. 
So firstly, I'd say don't go out and buy all the tools and equipment in the world because you do not need them. Basics are always the best because that's kind of... I went when I first started and ran out yeah. and got everything in the shop because it's just so tempting. KitchenAid you know? me up. Yeah, like just all of that. But um, after doing it for so long, I realised, actually, you don't need all that. You yeah. just need the tools, the easier tools, <laughs> um, and you just need to use them, basically. <laughs> um, so that's kind of one big top tip. Um, and also stick to kind of basic, um, so when you're baking and stuff yeah. like that, try, um, start off by just um, using the um, simple recipes that you can chop and change now and again, okay. like adding different flavours to it and stuff like that, and try not to go too wild. Um, and I think lots of people tend to look at YouTube and stuff like that, which is brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely fab. But um, sometimes there's like American recipes and stuff like that. Yeah. And people go out and um, they're new to baking and they try these American recipes and they don't work. Um, and then they, they think, why isn't it working? Um, so try UK So just keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it to what you know in terms of uh, whether it be metric or imperial. Yeah. You, know? um, right. you said equipment wise, you wouldn't go for much. Set of good scales, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. You need some digital scales might help. Yeah, you need the scales. You need the basics. I've got a KitchenAid here, you know, and they're really, really helpful. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But you don't necessarily go to, need to go to that expense, do you? You no. could, you could get a handheld. Absolutely, hundred percent. See how you get on, and then work yeah. from there. Yeah, because you know? I find, yeah, and yeah, you, you're the the expert here. Baking is a science oh, you, you can't just like wing it necessarily no it's a lot of practice and if it doesn't go f right first time try it again yeah. and always note down when it hasn't gone right always note down what went wrong and try yeah. and figure it out that way really I think people stress themselves out too much but we all do we all have like high oh, expectations absolutely. of ourselves yes. and we want to do the best that we can do but I think top tips are just keep it simple mm -hmm. Start simply and then, yeah, don't go out and get all the kits. No. Uh, digital Absolutely. scales for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then take it from uh, there, really. And there's loads of good online recipe and courses like yourself that yeah. you want to improve. I definitely, um, I definitely recommend going on to courses and bits like that to start with. Um, sometimes people tend to do it the opposite way around, so they do a lot of baking at home and then they go on courses, yeah. which is good, of course. But then if you went before you even started, then you'll learn what tools you need to use. Yeah. You'll learn all the different tips before you go and make those mistakes. This See, I, I think what time. people don't realise is people in the profession still take courses and still are learning themselves on different skills. You know, yeah. you might be great at baking, but, you know, maybe macarons not your thing Absolutely. and you'll try yeah. patisserie and or bread and just try and get a bit more of a skill set. Oh, 100%. Uh, is there any tips you could give for like the more intermediate to advanced baker that they yes. may not be doing that you do here? Yeah, so um, I would say not to be um, afraid of trying different things. Okay, fine. For example, last week, I'd never ever made a macaron okay. in my life, Imran. Which honestly. I find hard to believe. I know. Yeah, right? I, I right. It's mostly because lots of people are saying online and all of that that it's really difficult to do and they're mm. always tricky and they're a burger to make. Why not just buy them and all of that? Yeah. Um, so I always just bought them, Imran. <laughs> but until last week, I gave it a go. Okay. And because uh, I was scared of them before that. Oh, and, don't be scared of the macaron. No, I, know. <laughs> I, I love know. this. But last week I gave them a go, and after a couple of attempts, it did take me a, a few attempts, then I just got them right. And um, I wouldn't expect anything less. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just important to give things a go. Yeah, um, you have to try. Things can be a little bit daunting. Same with cooking uh, and, and baking. You do have to practice. You have to do it oh, often. And if you don't do it often, you're not going to improve. And yeah. then you'll just get frustrated the next time you do it and wonder what's going wrong, you know? Yeah, I always say to my students, like when they see me making something or something like that, and then they say, why can't I, why isn't mine looking like yours? Well, I'm, I always say, well, I've done it thousands of times. And um, like practice makes perfect. Yeah. But it was a different story when I was making macarons last week, because I was like, why can't I get it right? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 
you know. I can just easy. imagine the scenes here. Macarons know. being thrown everywhere. Ryan ducking yeah. for cover. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, whilst we're on the, the tips front, um, any tips for our gluten-free peeps and our vegan peeps? Yes, good, good recipes and um, basically... I can't believe I actually said peeps there. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to well, say... Was I know, we just got very casual there all, all of a sudden. <laughs> no, um, just, good, just good quality recipes and have a little look out there because there are good ones out there. Yeah. And if you're not confident, again, go on different courses and try them out as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, uh, any specific thing, for example, for um, a gluten-free, uh, do they have to just stick to gluten-free flour? Can they use something else? Um, well, gluten-free, yes. It depends, really, because you've got celiac disease and stuff like that. So you need to be very, very cautious. Um, when I, I unfortunately, don't do gluten-free cakes okay, fine. here because I've got a the environment isn't right for Yeah, it. no, I appreciate that. Um, uh, one day I'd love to have just a gluten-free kitchen. Okay, know? fine. So um, one separate one that you yeah, can... Yeah, yeah. So you need to be extra, extra careful if you do go and venture down the gluten-free options. Um, so just options. look at it a bit more thoroughly online, yeah. read a few good really gluten-free recipes. Same for vegan? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's lots of different vegan stuff. We are looking into doing lots more vegan because it's much more popular Yeah, now. absolutely. Um, so we've we've done courses on vegan baking and stuff like that here. Um, so we want to be able to offer more uh, vegan cakes and stuff as well. Okay. So Super. yeah, looking forward to that. And as we uh, approach uh, the end of uh, the podcast, yes. um, primarily because I want to eat those cakes, uh, uh, primarily... Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's your favourite cake? I my know. Fav- oh, my favourite I know, cake. put you on the spot. Oh, do you know what? It has to be carrot cake, I'd say. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I like a strong really choice. Different. Yeah, and I don't usually do carrot cake here because no? it's usually like sponges and chocolate cakes and stuff. So I don't often get a carrot cake. So yeah. I, I do enjoy it. Any, any like cream cheese frosting yeah, on there? Yeah, gotta have that. Yeah, no. Yeah, 100%. See, I didn't think you want to say carrot no. cake. No. What would you think? I, I was going to say some sort of like Chocolate cake <laughs> really or something. No. No, See, I'm quite old that. school. Like rather unfashionable red velvet cake. I love no, a red velvet cake. It is good. All Victoria sponge. No, no, absolutely. You've yeah. got to stick to the basics. The carrot cake, no, that's got me thinking. Yeah. No, I quite like what's the most popular people order then? Um I think it's um, flavour wise. Like vanilla because I think every, it pleases everyone. Yeah. yeah. And the vanilla cake here is lovely, even though I always say it myself. Absolutely. So, you know. I love it. You're so on message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it completely. Right. So um I'd just like to say uh, thanks very much no for coming on the po- uh, podcast, Gareth. It's Thank been a pleasure so just to catch up more yeah, than anything I else. And I hope uh, the podcast has been a good listen and good watch for you guys. If you like what you've heard and what you've watched, please subscribe. Please comment in the box underneath. Please share, tell your friends, and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. <laughs>